What knowledge do you need to have? What evidence do you need to have if you want to challenge something like this? Well, Nick Freeman is a motoring lawyer who's also known as Mr. Loophole. Good morning to you, Nick. Morning, Ian. Um, Is there a loophole here that uh, people can find or or, or something that actually is tangible? Well, 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 loop, loopholes are, of course, law. Um, as, as I think you've indicated, what happened was a new company took over in, in July of last year, um, which, which led to the problems. And the new company became responsible for vehicle identification and, and basically the, the payment processing and account management. And that there's been huge problems in all three areas. And as you've alluded to, um, particularly with people who had accounts, they just assume that I've got an account, there's money in the account, and every time I go through, I don't need to do anything. All, all these, there's something like 1.7 million people who have accounts, um, and only 700,000 um, had updated them. And that, that's for a variety of reasons. Many, many people hadn't received an email. Maybe they'd gone to junk. Maybe they changed their email address. Ultimately, um, the new provider can't debit your account without you confirming validation. So it's their. It's their obligation to make sure that technology works. There have been huge te- technical problems, but obviously they can't take the money. Um, to, to, to put your listeners' minds at rest, the, the, the appeal process has been very successful and almost a third of all appeals granted have, have succeeded. Um, so when you have a genuine case, i.e., you know, I didn't receive an email, um, it's not even on junk, I've just not received it, as long as you let them know, and you can prove that you had an account, which isn't difficult, um, it, it's very likely your appeal would succeed. You've got 28 days to appeal. As soon, the, prob- the problem arises, unfortunately, because many of these notices aren't received for several months, and that's how they've accumulated in such mm. vast numbers. Is, is uh, that something... For, for fleet drivers, and there needs to be a change in the law here. You know, well, if, if you were to go through a... If you were to commit an offence of speeding, which I'm sure you would never do, you would legally have to be notified within 14 days. Um, and if they didn't notify you, give you a notice of intent of prosecution, you couldn't be prosecuted however fast you were going. And, and the reason is to put you on notice so you can deal with it quickly. And surely there needs to be exactly the same legal requirement in this scenario to, to ex- avoid precisely this situation. But to answer your question, you, know, you, you appeal it, you make representations, you do so within 28 days. If that appeal is unsuccessful, you then go to the um, traffic adjudicator and you make representations before them. Um, And if you have a genuine case, you are very likely to succeed. I think I said about a third of all appeals granted have succeeded. So, but the obligation is on you. When you go through uh, over the the charge, you have to make sure that your account is now validated uh, and it is ultimately your responsibility to make sure you pay. Um, Mm. You'll be let off the first time with a warning letter and then afterwards, um, if you do it and you haven't ensured that the payment has been made, um, the the buck stops with you. If you've got a good reason, let them know and you'll win. If you haven't got a good reason, simply burying your head in the sand is not a good reason. Yeah, it's it's, Uh, it's a a, a rules rules versus compassion, isn't it? Because the, the rules are there and the rules are followed. But if a company has gone, well... We were finding around about 6% of drivers, and that, that seemed pretty steady for months and months and months, and then suddenly it's 8%. Yep. There's a bit well, of a red flag actually. there. Yeah, there's a bit well, of a red flag there, well, isn't there? Well, if I can to, to, to put that into perspective, in the three months prior to July of last year, the, the, on a, the average monthly figure was 195,000. After this company took over, it rose on, in average, on average to 277,000. So it's about a 50% increase. Um, which is just the most ridiculous scenario because there have been these technical problems. The, the, some of the equipment has been wrongly identifying vehicles. Um, there, there are so many different scenarios. So if, if it's a genuine mistake or if you had an account and you didn't validate it, you let them know, you'll almost certainly succeed. If you've left it and left it and left it, you're probably not going to succeed because time's passed and um, they're not going to look at it so sympathetically. The, the opportunity is lost. So my, my advice to your listeners is make sure your account's validated. Make sure you pay within within the window that's afforded. If there is a, a, a genuine problem, you, you appeal it as soon as you get it. And, and, and it's probably a good idea to keep a sort of diary record of when you go across that. Things have now settled down and they're almost back to the pre-July 23 levels of fines. So I think that they're now on top of it. Um, 
and justice has been restored, hopefully. <laughs> Inter interesting what you said a minute ago as well, about that if you get a speeding ticket, you have to be notified yeah. within 14 Absolutely. days. And some of these Absolutely. fines, they took months to come through. Yeah, some fleet drivers, there's one fleet driver who I think had two and a half thousand vehicles involved. His vehicles were being clamped around London and he knew nothing about it until all of a sudden um, enforcement officers arrived and started clamping his vehicles. Uh, and th th this is crying for legal change. It, it has to happen because it it's just grossly unfair to everyone concerned. You know, all parties, it doesn't work. And from an administrative point of view, it's a nightmare. It costs a lot of money. But more importantly, from the, 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 the customer point of view, the driver point of view, you need to be told at an early stage, this is what you've allegedly done. Ah, oh, yes, I remember where I was going. No, I paid it. I've got, here you go. I've got all the information. When they come back months later with several vehicles, you know, your life's moved on and it's very, it's very difficult to deal with, isn't it? And mm. there's a lot of stress involved as well as a lot of time. So, you know, I will be asking the government to consider changing the law. This is just, this is, this is not a loophole. This is, this is something that's actually wrong with the law that needs to be got hold of. Yeah, I mean, if a, if a camera can read a number plate in real time, then yeah. surely the, the, there shouldn't be this, this months and months and months delay. There's, because no, I, excuse, I'm, there's no excuse for it. A lot there's of no these systems are automated, aren't they? It's all automated, as are, you know, you, you, know, you go through a speeding camera, it's all, the whole process is automated. Literally, there's no human contact. Everything happens automatically, and, and it works fine. And you normally get it. You 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 should hear that you've allegedly committed an offence within ten, twelve days. You know, if you were going, God forbid, 170 miles an hour, and the notice arrives on the fifteenth day, they cannot prosecute you for speeding. So it, does, it doesn't matter. Even if you say yes, I was doing that. It, it's a, a mandatory legal requirement, and it's there for very good reason. And and the same needs to apply here. In a nutshell, Nick, if you, if as you said, the, the these the, the penalty notices do seem to be reducing in number at the moment. But if you feel you've been yeah. unfairly treated, in in short, your advice: be polite but be firm. Absolutely, which is just be honest. Have the evidence. Have all the information. Um, the, the the penalty number, um, the registration number of your car, any information you've got to to illustrate what you're going to say. Um, people have been phoning call centres and they've been jammed, so it's best to do it online. Let them have it. Each case is looked at individually, um, and as I say, the statistics show that that you know the 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 chances of succeeding on appeal are pretty good. They're about a third. Thirty one point seven five percent of all cases have been granted successfully since July. So you no, know, the genuine cases. But but if you simply ignored stuff, thinking it will go away, I'm afraid you, you will not succeed. Nick, really interesting to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Nick Freeman, motoring lawyer, you may have heard of him. He's known as Mr Loophole, says he's going to be writing to the government to